They're taking a 10 minute recess right now, but boy, has it been an impactful day and not a good one. If you are Hunter Biden or Joe Biden, some very damaging statement. Let's bring in our panel now. Uh, President Trump's impeachment lawyer David Schoen joins me today and also attorney and state chair of the Delaware Party, uh, Republican Party. Julianne Mari, welcome in to you both. Thank you. Powerful moments. I mean, right there, we just heard Congressman Timmons talk about the paradox and what the Bidens have been able to sort of do, be above the law. And he, he mentioned David, uh, David to you first, Peter Navarro, contempt of Congress, J6, it might even be pardoned. He has an appeal. He's 76 years old. He's going to prison on a misdemeanor for what many people say is a sham committee. You know, it wasn't partisan. They hid information. They, they had Hollywood producers, you know. And here we have Hunter Biden, who originally skipped out on a hearing, isn't there today. There's an empty chair. You know, isn't there just uh, so much hypocrisy for Americans? It's hard to even ignore it anymore. Even even if you are somewhat a left-leaning person, it doesn't this rise to something just so egregious? Sure, the hypocrisy and the double standard is clearly evident. Obviously, technically, he wasn't subpoenaed today, so it's not quite the same as Navarro. But Mr. Timmons makes a very important point. The January 6th committee violated rule after rule after rule, both in its composition and in, it, in the way it proceeded. It had no ranking minority member, which is an absolute requirement, and so on. Um, if Congress has the courage, Speaker Johnson should convene their bilateral uh, group called BLAG and make a declaration that the January 6th committee uh, was illegitimate and the subpoenas were not valid that it issued. That's the kind of thing that sends an appropriate message for the integrity of the rules of the House, and they need to restore that integrity now. Because that would affect Navarro's would affect case Navarro's and case. so many other cases. If he was to do that, the dominoes that would fall. Julianne, are you in support of this, the BLAG, the bilateral uh, movement here that, that David's saying Speaker Johnson can enact right now? Absolutely. I mean, I think that we all know that this is a sham. Uh, we just need to make sure that we can move this, you know, move it along and, you know, and, and call it out for what it is. The American people know we need to formalize that because this all needs to be shut down. In the meantime, though, we have Donald Trump trying to find uh, $464 million in cash just lying around. You know, I mean, it's hard for even someone of like, you know, Elon or Bezos status to find that. Letitia James on Monday could actually begin seizing his properties in New York. Um, here are some of her past comments. Are you confident that you can pay for it? I built a great company. Uh, one of the greatest companies anywhere in the country, especially when it comes to real estate, have some of the greatest assets in the world. And this is a rigged trial. This was a rigged trial by a crooked judge and a crooked attorney general. And we're fighting it out with them. We have a lot of cash and we have a great company, but they want to take it away or at least take the cash element away. Billions of dollars in value, billions of dollars in properties, but they'd like to take the cash away so I can't use it on the campaign. And this is just a corrupt group of people. It's election interference, and we'll see how the courts uh, rule on it. And I'll be, I'll be guided, I'll be guided, excuse me, I'll be guided by the courts. She's been saying she's ready. Um, can't use the cash on the campaign, David. That, I think, is very significant. Jumps out to many people. Your read on what Donald Trump said just yesterday after voting in West Palm Beach alongside the former First Lady Melania. I think normal people in America are outraged by the idea that he can't, that his appeal is being hampered by having to come up with this kind of money, which Mark Cuban even said, who doesn't like President Trump. Mark Cuban said, no matter how rich you are, you don't have this kind of cash lying around. Pair this in mind. If this were the state or some political subdivision of the state taking the appeal under a CPLR 5519, the section of the New York Code for stays, they wouldn't have to put up any bond. Um, and it is discretionary with the court under 5519C to allow him to go forward without putting up this kind of bond. That's what it should be. If they're in interested in justice, let's get the merits of the appeal before the court and not try to bankrupt someone um, on, to exercise their rights in the process. I like when you put out the statutes, including what you just said about, you know, the, the blag. I mean, I'm just getting so much download here. It makes, you know, information is power. Americans want to know this. And it's very empowering when you, you hear some of this. And I think that's important, although this seems like a lot for Donald Trump to take when there are sort of these avenues. And it's Eighth Amendment. It's constitutional.